if you had to pick two solar sorts of gears for anything in game, what would you pick? Would you select Celestial Nighthawk, that's great for one shotting ultras and mini bosses, but also getting most of his super back? Or would you pick Shards of Galanor, where you can get back around 50% super upon usage, but also getting super back via the mini? This is the question that pops into players' heads when playing anything in game, but the answer to this isn't so hard to pick. The Shards of Galanor and Dragon's Breath are exotics that will nuke whatever content you have in mind, and I'm going to show you one of the best builds that hunters really should be using. From getting your super and abilities back in minutes, to easily dealing with mini bosses and bosses alone. And this is a build worth making into the final shape. So as we have chosen the use Shards of Galanor as our main exotic pick, it would be suitable and ideal to break down why this is the golden pick to use. Its exotic trait, Sharp Edges, states, Throw knife final blows, decreases the cooldown of your super, Hits and final blows with Blade Barrage will return super energy after the super ends. Getting a super kill will reward up to 50% super energy back depending on the enemy rank you face. You'll also get a 2.5 to 5% super energy return via melee kills, which would be best paired with Ashes to Assets or Hands On. A new recommend setup to fully maximize the kit would be to invest in 4 melee mods, perks, and fragments, and use those to get our super back within a few minutes. This is possible if you choose to pick it, but you then have to think about how this will work in later endgame content. Hence why my approach is to make the build more flexible, so it can cover a wide number of areas. This will be achieved via fragments, mods and aspects, but most importantly via Dragon's Breath. The exotic trait, Composite Repellent, states, Rockets embed themselves, instruct targets, and periodically eject its injury fuel that inflicts Scorch. The longer this weapon goes without firing, the more fuel the next rocket contains. Combining this heavy with Ember Searing is all you'll need for generating melee energy back fast and thus will leave you space to fill in the mod section for something like Ashes of Acids instead. As we continuously play, you'll see how fast I can get my super back via melee and grenades only. For aspects and fragments, I have Gunpowder Gamble, where defeating targets with solar abilities, solar debuffs, or solar weapons will charge up improvised solar explosive. Blade Barrage will launch more projectiles, and while Radiant, getting a throw and knife final blow will refund you back. Ember of Shah, where your solar ignition spreads scores to affected targets. Ember of Wonder, where taking out multiple targets with solar ignition generates an orb of power. Ember of Searing, where defeating Scorched targets grants mini energy and creates fire sprite. And Ember of Ashes, where you apply more Scorched stats to targets. As Searing will play a big part with covering how much mini energy we'll get back from gameplay, Everything else will then fall in line over time. Ashes will cover all of the items that produce scorching hits and is a must have. Ember Shower will allow us to spread scorch to targets after our ignitions have kicked in, which will lead back to our two fragments mentioned earlier. And then Ember Wonder is here for allowing us to produce an extra orb of power for me and my team. Ember Wonder is debatable though, as it can help me and my team with edging closer to having a super available, but at the same time, having something like Ember Combustion would be better as it can link back to Ember Sharp and cause a large knock-on effect to occur. For the mods and stats section, we're going to invest into resilience, discipline and strength. Out of the three, strength will be the only one that won't get too much investment since it already has quite a bit from the other sources. For resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. It is recommended to add something like resistance mod to help counter specific elemental attacks to further improve our defenses, but this is down to the user and not solely required. For Discipline, we have ours at tier 10 with a 37 second cooldown via fusion grenades. Although having a much stronger grenade would be more beneficial since we can pull it off, the following allows me to get my grenades back faster while also feeding straight back into me getting a large grenade type via Gunpowder Gamble. As we play, you'll see me make full use of the improvised explosives as it has great coverage and allows me to make quick work of enemies and also get a large amount of super energy back via Ashes to Assets. This is why I stated earlier, you don't need to worry about relying on super energy via MIDI alone. I've added the Grenade Kickstart mod for a 34.4% to 45% Grenade Regen, Absolution for a 5% All Ability cooldown, Bomber for a 12% cooldown, and Distribution times 2 for a 6% All Ability cooldown. For armor charges, we have charged up, which is going to make sure we always have an extra charge slot on the current armor we have. While stacks and stacks will escalate our charges from one stack 
2. After that, having Harmonic Siphon will help with creating orbs of power, but also having Momentum Transfer and Impact Induction will support both Midi and Grenade separately. Lastly, you may want to have Harmonic Reserves and Scavenger mods since the build will be using a Heavy quite a lot. The weapons we have chosen are ones that are ideal for covering all areas we play in, but also support Dragon's Breath for that extra level of damage. The Mountain Top with Recombination and Lead from Gold and Spike Grenades is the perfect special to have if you don't want to use a Chill Clip Fusion Rifle. Although having auto loading would be more helpful, including Vorpal, we could just rely on our dodge ability to quickly reload if it's much of a pain. I have found this weapon to be great with dealing with the higher tier enemies like Captain Zell Knights, who become a huge priority when reaching later waves. It's also quite powerful with dealing with champions, but only if the champion you face is already stunned. The combo is sweet, and I highly recommend everyone to try and get the following, if possible. Our primary is the Zalos Bane with Incandescent and Explosive Payload, and this is a raid exclusive weapon that I managed to get after farming for god knows how long. If you want a mini sunshot, then this weapon is what you want, and it really does feel like a mini sunshot in hand, but better. In fact, if you can nab the following weapon at any chance you get, you can forget your sunshot as it will allow more freedom of exotic to pick. Of course, since this weapon is raid exclusive, not everyone can get it, so having the Apocalypse Integration Hand Cannon is a good comparison that is close to the raid weapon as best as possible. The Shards of Ganon gets looked down upon quite a bit by players only because the amount of super energy granted has now been capped. Although I do agree, Sog isn't as great as it used to be back in the day, let's be honest here with just how broken it used to be. If they kept this broken nature in game, I can 100% see the super in Onslaught being filled with nothing more than Sog players with one Deadfall Tether. The current build around the exotic allows us to easily garner our super energy back via medium grenade back to back, but will also act as a great way of clearing lanes down when certain enemy types start to appear. Ogres, Invis Vandals, Captains, Knights, and Snipers tend to be the enemies that will quickly overwhelm you and then destroy you if you don't have a great super or heavy to rely on. Landing your super onto a mini boss or group of targets will net you back 50% super energy, and then using your throw knife, grenade, and one well placed heavy will be enough to prevent these types of enemy groups from advancing any further. As shown, I was able to reach wave 50 legend with the setup quite easily, as long as I kept aware of my surroundings and reacting quite fast. Now, in terms of downsides, there isn't really much of a downside to the build, as it can be adapted to whatever you like. The only thing that can bring it down is the player experience, if you're playing with teammates who don't know what they're doing. Outside of that, the build is as simple yet powerful as described it to be, so now it's down to you to decide if it's worth investing in or not. But honestly, it's 100% worth an investment. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts and content shared, then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoy the content and want similar in the future, then leave a like and sub out here. I'll leave a dim link for the build below. And for more stuff like this, then I've played this available covering all types of builds you desire. It was great sharing today's video with you all, and I hope to see you again soon.